Who here has a robot at home? Hands up, anybody? Who here has a washing machine at home? Who here, uh, keep your hands up, who here has a, uh, a dishwasher at home? Yeah, a lot of you have robots. Okay, are you afraid of them? Okay, the reason I chose this picture that we have here is uh, one of my favorite movies, Ellie Arroway, the renegade scientist from Contact who wants to analyze signals to find is there intelligence out there in the universe, okay? And the people who uh, brought deep learning and uh, artificial intelligence to the mainstream were very much outsiders. Uh, David Drummond, the chief scientist who uh, Ellie Arroway was reporting to, said, you know, if you, if you go down this path, you'll never get funded, you'll never, be, you'll never be published, and your career will be over before you start it. And these people spent, you know, 20 years in the, in the wilderness until 2012, and that's when the Big Bang in terms of AI happened. Uh, convolutional neural networks, and we were able to do pre you know, things that previously we hadn't been able to do. There was an overnight you know, 10, 15% improvement in terms of the accuracy with which machines could recognize faces, etc. You know, the company that, uh, that we founded, we're, we're basically focused on you know, improving robots and making better robots to serve us. This technology is going to touch every area of human experience and human technology. What's different is, you know, the robots are no longer going to be washing your clothes or washing your dishes. They'll continue to do that. You're going to have robots that are going to do things that previously you would have done that required some level of human judgment. Uh, we're not focused on trying to, uh, let's say, or uh, look at your social behavior and so on. We're more focused on making machines that can serve you. If you look at the history of automation, uh, until the era of the iPhone 7 ten, 10 years ago, or sorry, the iPhone 10 years ago, uh, machines essentially served us and they were giving us more time. Since 2007, we've ended up with a scenario where uh, these devices have become time sync. So we're very much in the business of trying to give people their time back. If you look at Andrew Ng, uh, chief, uh, former chief technologist at uh, Baidu, uh, basically he says, you know, this is, this is, uh, the most important thing to happen since electrification. Uh, uh, to be honest, I think uh, he's, uh, um, he's not exaggerating. Uh, I think it's far more important than that. I mean, they say that if technology is sufficiently advanced, that it, uh, it, um, it's indistinguishable from magic. And essentially, what deep learning puts us in a position now is given the right data uh, to bottle up the equivalent of human experience and to mass produce it. So no longer do you, in order to be able to uh, interpret ra uh, radio uh, or let's say imagery of, from radiography for cancers and so on, do you have to spend 20 years to be uh, a top practitioner in this area? Um, uh, basically, one of the founders of Kaggle started a, uh, a company uh, where within the space of a month, uh, they had a system which had been trained using, uh, uh, using his, uh, imagery of, uh, of tumors and so on and was outperforming the humans. And now it's basically starting to uh, access medical records so they can look at treatment histories to get better outcomes. Okay. What we're, as a company, what we're focused on is on things like this uh, tiny uh, drone here from, uh, from DJI. Uh, which can, ba it does things like you can gesture left or right, tell it to go backwards, forwards, tell it to take a selfie and so on. So previously you would have to, had to worry about uh, how to pilot the drone. Uh, now essentially the drone can pretty much take care of, its, of itself and you can, uh, you can treat this thing like a flying camera. And you know, I think this is very much the, uh, the harbinger of what's gonna come. You're gonna have uh, devices that perform useful functions that previously would have been f performed by you. Uh, what scares me is not uh, robots, it's uh, what scares me is people. And in fact, what we'll talk about now is bias. And you know, the real enemy uh, for all of us in terms of creating machines and systems that can serve us better is uh, to eliminate bias. And I'm operating on the premise that uh, eliminating bias uh, uh, is the single biggest challenge uh, facing us and it's the one where uh, diversity is our ally. If you look at uh, um, products that have been, and services that have been released over the past, uh, you know, in this case, uh, seven years, 
Uh, we've had several major product uh, failures or issues, uh, first being Microsoft's Connect, which didn't recognize people with black skin initially because it hadn't been trained to recognize black skin. Similarly, Google in 2015 introduced photo tagging and it was labeling black people as gorillas. And as recently as last week, if you look on Rachel Thomas's uh, um, blog, uh, she talks about uh, a system for ranking uh, restaurants in the US where it had been trained on a corpus of freely available data uh, and it contained a huge amount of bias. The result was, you know, Mexican restaurants were getting very negative reviews because of the numbers of, me uh, numbers of mentions of uh, illegal Mexican immigrants. Uh, and this is really the, the problem that we have, uh, that there's, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it affects uh, things like, let's say, um, blink uh, detection um, in, in camera software, uh, beautification uh, software. This is basically creeping into these systems. And, uh, you know, obviously this is upsetting for people, but, you know, from a commercial standpoint, it, it creates brand damage that has to be rectified, and it's, it's perfectly avoidable. Um, you know, I, my wife is a psychologist, and often she tells me to watch my language. Well, you know, in preparing for this talk, I found that she's right. If you look at that uh, straight line graph, uh, there's a very high correlation in some of the word embedding, uh, embeddings that are used to train systems, uh, where it, 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 what's the names of certain professions, the, you know, the likelihood is that you're going to be male or female, and there's a very strong correlation. That's what that straight line means. So, you know, uh, the, if you train systems using this kind of language, uh, you al almost preordain uh, the outcome. And it's not some kind of fairy godmother uh, AI, it's essentially garbage in, garbage out. If you don't train, train these systems properly, you'll end up with something that doesn't serve you and in fact can do you a disservice, particularly when we're talking about automating systems that may uh, affect your, your health care, your insurance or other things that have potentially life impacting consequences depending on, on how you've trained the system. So it's important for all of us to be aware of this and to be involved, uh, not only for, for, uh, you know, the good, uh, for the good reasons in terms of quality, in terms of uh, it being the moral thing to do, but also economically we're, be we're better served. Uh, you know, there are many different metrics in terms of, of uh, you know, what diversity means uh, in terms of consumer spending. Most of the decisions are made by women. Uh, in terms of having diversity in an organization, it adds to the value. This is all, uh, all proven and ultimately will translate into better sales and so on because you better understand the people who are uh, who are the prime consumers of whatever uh, whatever device or service that you're making. But it's diversity, not just fr of gender, it's diversity across the board, cultural, linguistic, uh, in terms of male, female, LGBT, etc. Uh, we need to cover all the bases here because otherwise somebody, unfortunately, gets uh, uh, gets the the sharp end of the stick and uh, uh, and basically has a service which is is uh, it, it, which is unsatisfactory in some way you know at, at intel uh, you know we were the first to publish numbers here in terms of uh, gender participation and in terms of uh, uh, of uh, racial participation uh, in uh, in in the workforce and uh, this basically led to other major multinationals doing the same uh, we're we're still a long way from having 50 percent representation and this is something that uh, the company is very serious about. They're, they've set an objective uh, to have you know, full diversity across the board by 2020, and they're, spend, they're putting their money where their mouth is, spending $300 million on this. So it's a very, uh, you know, they, ha they have a chief diversity officer, et cetera. So this is a, as a big priority, but it's not just for, for uh, economic or PR or moral reasons. It's because you can ultimately make better products or services. You know, and unfortunately, it's not just a question of filling the pipeline. There have been there, there's been work published on, you know, how this is a pipeline problem because, let's say, for data scientists, it typically takes people five years. The the, the pioneering work uh, that led to the big uh, step change was back in 2012. So effectively, people start who started after Alex Kruszewski's paper was published. Uh, they would just be exiting a PhD program now had they had, they had the vision back in 2012 to enroll. 
uh, but it's not just a pipeline problem. We all know about Irish water here and about uh, an awful lot of what you put in one end of the pipe doesn't come out the other end. And in fact, if you look at, um, if you, if you look at, uh, f at female participation in the workforce uh, you know, a, a, of women who've qualified in engineering over the past 50 years, okay, some of them will have, gone, uh, will have, uh, have taken their pensions and so on at this stage, but it's, it's a kind of startling to see that 38% of them uh, no longer work in the field. So there's obviously something wrong. Uh, if you look at uh, you know the median uh, time after which many uh, studies were, cons uh, were uh, analyzed, you know why people uh, left, uh, they left because of the culture. And uh, in terms of women who were non uh, non white, uh, they uh, pretty much 100% of them uh, in a smaller study, I think about 60 people. Uh, again, this was from Rachel Thomas's blog, which I'd I'd recommend reading. Uh, basically, they they uh, they experienced uh, discrimination. So it's it's the climate is the problem. So it's no good it's no good filling. <laughs> it's no good filling the pipeline if we have lots of leaks along the way. So, you know, obviously there are threats out there. Uh, you know, the threats may or may not be overblown. We'll see. But certainly, whatever the threat is, we should, we should try to minimize it. And one of the ways that we can do that is through diversity. And uh, you know, one of the things that we've been working on here with, uh, I with EI uh, and with, uh, with the IDA has been into trying to give uh, AI within Ireland uh, a label. And uh, you know, I, I think personally that we should aim at diversity for many different reasons. I mean, first of all, it's the right thing to do from any reasonable point of view, but it's also, as I mentioned, the, the right thing to do from an economic perspective. You make better products that aren't gonna fail in the marketplace as soon as you, you know, there won't be a Twitter storm when you, when you release something if you've, if you've had a, a full team round the table with all the stakeholders involved. It's the right thing in terms of positioning Ireland uniquely. I mean, all of the multinationals are seriously motivated to try and get balanced organizations because they realize that you know, it's all about the data, it's all about making sure the data going into training these systems is, is balanced, otherwise you end up with a system that is gonna discriminate against somebody. And it's right for Ireland in terms of scale because we're a small country, uh, you know, if you were to spend 10 times the amount of money, you're not gonna get 10 times the number of men engaged in, uh, in the field. Uh, but with women, you know, participating at maybe a rate of 25%, you have a very high chance there of doubling or tripling the numbers and getting and getting close to uh, close to parity or uh, or exceeding parity with men. And you know, there's ample. I was talking to Brian McCraith from uh, the president of DCU yesterday, and they're talking about you know redesigning the programs, even the language of ar around the programs that they have in order to to attract women, because often that's the very first stage of wi which women are put off. Uh, participating in these programs and enrolling for them. Uh, and let's, let's say it as well, I mean, the uh, diversity is very much, you know, we were the first uh, country in the world to have the courage uh, to, uh, to uh, basically have a public plebiscite and, and uh, thankfully pass uh, gay marriage uh, for, uh, and give, give people who are, uh, who are, who are gay um, full uh, um, parity of esteem. Uh, so it fits very much with the political uh, climate as well, and I think you know this is something that can can serve us and serve Ireland well. Final parting thought would be, you know, it, it, it this is like a, you know, AI is going to affect everything. It's going, it's an opportunity for people who maybe haven't participated in the workforce. You know, they've been at home uh, for for uh, for family reasons and so on. Uh, they've maybe reached their point like I did back in, uh, you know, uh, um, in 2003, I reached my point of incompetency, went back to do a PhD in college. Thankfully now you don't have to go back to a PhD. There are a huge number of resources in terms of learning uh, about deep learning and learning about these systems online. And uh, there, there's a very serious discussion going on about an all Ireland AI uh, masters uh, to allow people to acquire these skills while they're on the job. And I think it's essential you know, for, for us, for our country, for our, uh, our, uh, for our company, and for, for our future and the future of our children that we, that we emb embrace this in a positive way and that we, uh, we play to our strengths. I mean, Ireland historically, 
was known as, a, as the island of saints and, and scholars, so you know, why wouldn't we have a hope uh, uh, in the future of being known as you know, the, the, uh, the home of diverse thinking in, uh, in terms of data science? So thank you very much for bearing with me.